Hi, this is uh, the notes for homework after section 9.3 dealing with sequences in series. In this case, what we want to try to deal with are recursive formulas for sequences. And so with a recursive formula, you need to know the previous term to get to the next term. So you need to have a rule for the next term and a starting point to define the sequence. So some of you have been through this, so why don't you pause now, please pause, and then write out uh, what the next few terms are for each one of these. Here are each one of the sequences written out, and so this one's just adding three every time, so that's what we're going up by. We're starting at this first term. So if you need more explanation, stay with us. So we go one, two, three, four, and so on. Uh, and I'm just taking and I base each term on the previous term. So if here's 13, I'm going to add 3. So one way to look at this equation up here is to say that now is equal to the previous plus 3. So the now term is equal to the previous term plus 3. So this subscript just means that it's the previous term. And so these are the locker numbers, so to speak, 1, 2, 3, 4, and these are the numbers that are in the locker. Same thing here. This is 1, 2, 3, 4. And so this is now is equal to 3 times the previous. So I'm just multiplying by 3 each time. If you look at what type of, type of sequences these are, this one is arithmetic because it has a common difference. And that becomes evident up here in the recursive formula. This difference is 3. This one is geometric. And then this one has a ratio of 3. So we multiply by 3 every time. This one is called a mixed, which we haven't talked about yet. We might get to it, we might not. But a mix has both multiplication and uh, addition in it. So it's neither, it actually is a neither if I'm asking for arithmetic or geometric. But it is something that we will deal with later on. Uh, this one has a quadratic generator for the recursive mode, and so this one is a neither as well. And then this one here, oh, this one's nice. This is Fibonacci. So with the Fibonacci, you take each of the two previous terms and add them to get to the next term. Now, can we write an explicit for each one of these? Well, for 1 and 2, we can. We know how to do that. For 1, since it's arithmetic, explicit formula is a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. And so with a sub n, any term is equal to the first term, which is 7. And then I'm just going to jump by n minus 1 steps with my difference, which would be 3. So there would be my general formula. You can simplify that as well, but that is my general formula for an arithmetic. Then for the geometric, geometric is number 2. My common ratio is 3. So for a geometric again, we have <coughs> a sub n. Oh, I lost my pen. Just a second. We have a sub n is equal to a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1. And so a sub n here is equal to my first term, which is 2, times my ratio, which is 3 to the n minus 1. The other 3, I can't write a formula for right now. This mixed one will be able to, possibly later on. And then this one that has a quadratic uh, recursive generator, uh, we'll probably be able to do that later on too. Fibonacci, I don't believe, has a an explicit way to write that. Uh, but if I'm wrong, let me know. That'd be great to find out. Okay, then the next problem is the handshake problem. And with the handshake problem, if somebody walks into a room, how many handshakes occur if every person shakes hands with everybody else? And so you can try this for yourself, and you can pause this, and I really would like some of you to challenge yourselves with it. And then how I would do it, though, is I would list out and start with a pattern and see if there is a pattern. So if I have two people in a room, and what I can do is I can draw a picture. Between the two, there's only one handshake. So anytime I draw this segment, I'm going to get a handshake. So two people in the room, it's going to be one handshake. 
if I have three people in the room, well, it's just going to be a triangle. So I count up the segments. One, two, three. There's going to be three handshakes. Four people in the room. One, two, three, four. Oh, it's going to be four. Oh, wait a second. These two have to go, too. So actually, I have six segments there. So I went from one, three, six. And then my fifth term is going to be... Uh, this one will look like one of those house things, or a star, I believe. So one, two, three, four, five. So I go around the outside and connect up. And there's my star. So I'm going to get five from inside and five more, which makes ten. If I do six, really all I'm doing is I'm connecting. Each time I'm connecting one point to all the previous ones. So already I have 10 in here with five people in the room. If I step in the room, I just need to shake five more hands. And so I'm just going to add in 15. Uh, I'm, I'm going to add in five to make 15 total handshakes. And so this one can connect to all these. And you're going to add in five more. And so we can find a pattern here and figure out what's going on. Well, if this one, the difference is two. Three. Oh, look at this. Four, five. So if I want to find the sixth term, I'm going to take the fifth term and I'm going to add five. Okay. So if I want a recursive formula, this is not the recursive formula, but this is how I can set it up. I take the fifth term and I'm going to add in five. So if I do a sub n based on this, this would be my previous term, which I write as a sub n minus one. And then I'm going to add in n minus 1. This explicit formula, I want you to try this one. I'm not going to show you how to do that. You can figure that one out and then bring it to class. We can talk about it. Now, the next part deals with the mixed relation. Uh, so if we have something that has both multiplication and addition in its recursive formula, we're going to get something that is called a mixed relation. And the premise of this to get the explicit formula is to use the fixed point. Also, the fixed point is useful for our next example after this. But first of all, if I take this explicit one, I want you to write out the first five, uh, first uh, four terms of the sequence if you start with five, and write out the first four terms if you started at six, and see what the differences are. Pause this and go ahead and do that. You should have got these following values. So if I take five and I plug it in here, it'd be two times five, 10 minus 3, which is 7. And then I do 14 minus 3 is 11, and so on. And if you notice, if you start at 5, you get one set of pattern. And if you start at 6, you get another set of pattern. They're actually very different, which is, well, to me, very amazing. Now, if you look at the fixed point, what does the fixed point mean? Well, that means, what if I let t sub 1 equal some number such that when I plug it back in, it's going to keep on giving me the same number back again and again and again. So in other words, now is equal to the previous every time. If that's the case, well, here's my now, here's my previous. I'm going to let them equal the same thing and plug them into this formula to solve it out. So if I go x is equal to 2x minus 3 and solve for this, I get negative x is equal to negative 3, so x is equal to 3. A little algebra there. So if x equals to 3, that's my fixed point. Now let's see what this does. So if I take my recursive formula, 2, 2, uh, whatever this is here, and I plug in 3 now. So 3 is my starting value. t sub 2 would equal 2 times 3 minus 3. Oh, that's 3. If I go t sub 3, that means take this 3 and plug it in. Well, obviously, I'm going to get the same thing. So this sequence with t sub 1 equaling 3 is going to be 3, 3, 3, 3. So on. That's the fixed point. Now, that will help us for our next example, and we'll get into that in a sec. Now, for the other side of the paper, we have a credit card example, and this one will pertain to all of you. Credit cards pays 18% annual interest, uh, and that's that's pretty common. They charge 20, 21%, sometimes even more. So you got to be careful what credit card charges you get yourself into. 
So if we take that 18% annual interest and say, for instance, you owe $2,000 and you pay $50 off each month, that's actually just a trickle. What we can do is use our calculator and some other things to sort this out. But first of all, we need to write a recurrence relation. So right now, what I have is going to be equal to my previous term. So whatever I owe, and then I'm going to be charging, or and this is from the bank's perspective, I guess you could put this. They're going to be charging me 18% per month. So whatever I owe, they're going to charge me 18%, and that's what I'm going to owe off here. And so they're adding more and more and more to my account, which I don't like. So I'm going to pay off, and so from the bank's perspective, I'm going to subtract off my balance. I'm going to subtract off $50 every month. This is a recurrence relation. Now you should pause and look at that and make sure you understand it. But really, once again, it's my payment or whatever I owe now is equal to what I owed before. They're charging me interest, and then I pay off the $50. Then it says, uh, for part B, use the sequence function of your calculator to find the balances after the first six month, months. When will the credit card be paid off? So let's go to our calculator, get that out, and see what happens there. Calculator, first thing, put the mode. So we go to mode and we go down to sequence. And that would be this one, not sequential, but sequence. And we want to do uh, that one. So we push enter. And then when we push Y equals, it's going to change everything quite a bit. And so I have this N minimum and all this other stuff. Well, this U sub N, that is the same thing as A sub N. It's the same thing as this right here. The calculator just can't put this subscript in there. And then if I have uh, n minus 1 as a subscript, i got to put it in parentheses. So let's clear this out and show you how to do this. And so if I take this, first of all, I'm going to start actually at, at 0 for my first term because that's going to be my initial. And then I'm going to put a rule in here. And that would be the same rule as what I have over here. So it's going to be U. So you go second, number seven, and then you're going to put in parentheses, and then you got to put in N. Since I'm in sequence mode, the variable button is going to pop up the N, and then I'm going to go minus one. And so right now, this just means now is equal to the previous, and these are just the subscripts, and then I'm going to multiply by one plus point one eight divided by twelve and so that would give me the that's what the bank's charging you and so it's charging eighteen percent annual interest and then I'm going to subtract off fifty so I go minus fifty and then what is my initial amount well I paid for something with two thousand dollars bought my new TV Woo! I'm gonna pay this thing off well, it's not going to go so fast. So let's see what happens. First of all, table set. We'll get us started. We're going to start at zero, and we're going to go uh, by ones, and we're going to put this other part on auto. And then we can go to the table here, and there it is. So after paying off $50, ooh, it only decreases by $20. So the rest of that $30 is going to service the loan. And if you notice down here, if I continue going down, I can see how long it's going to take. These are months, remember. Oh, boy. My TV is taking me two years. Oh, okay. Uh-oh. Well, it's going to take me a long time if I do this. Let me pause this and get... So I scrolled down to 61 months, and that's when I'd pay it off. 61 months?! Yeah, that's what happens when you just pay off the minimum. Credit cards are very enticing to people because they don't have to pay very much. But if you really look at this, you're paying a ton of money to the bank every month just to service this loan. Terrible. So this one is 61 months, and our final payment was about $22. And then now this last part, point C, find the fixed point amount of your recursive relationship. What does that mean? Well, that means that now is the same thing as the next term. So each one is the same. 
So if I set this up and solve, you can go.